If you use GarageBand, you might be excited to find out that you have a fully functioning MIDI controller hidden within GarageBand. This video is all about showing you where this controller lives and how to use each of its unique functions. So let's dive in. All right, so we are inside of like a dance electronic song that I'm having way too much fun with. And I am going to show you the secret hidden MIDI controller, the fully functioning MIDI controller that's within GarageBand. And here's how you find it. You can hit Command K on your typing keyboard and it brings up what's called a musical typing feature. Now you can also go up to your menu, hit window, and you could technically go show or hide musical typing, but I like to use Command K, it's just easier, okay? And so we get this little box right here and there's several parameters, little tools on it. And I'm just gonna go through each one and show you what they are. Number one, you can switch over to a, a keyboard, but honestly, I don't ever use this and I don't find it very helpful because you can only click one note at a time using your mouse. If I actually use my MIDI controller, it'll show up, but that's really the only time that I use this to show other people what I'm doing. And up here, you can see what range you're in. So if you look down here, you'll see I'm in the C1 octave. Now I can click up and go to the C3 or C2 or back to C1, or I can also use the typing keyboard shortcut, shortcut excuse me, of Z and X to go down up those lanes. I think it's a better way to navigate. And so if I am in, let's pull up this synth. If I am uh, here and see one, that's really low. I need to go higher. Okay, that's about right. Or maybe you wanna be there. It just depends on what sound you're going for, right? Now, let's go up to this line right here. And first, I wanna point out the pitch bin feature, which is so cool. I can't believe they actually have this right on your typing keyboard, it's awesome. And so, if I pull up these air bells and I want to bend one, I would hit the note and then hit the number two if I wanna go up, or I could obviously go, go down. So. I use this all the time and it's just a cool way to bring some life to your MIDI performance and it's so awesome to me that you can literally do this with your typing keyboard. So then right over here is called the modulation thing or the, the, the modulation thing, I don't know, a spectrum. And again, I'm pointing at my, my MIDI controller because you normally have what's called a mod wheel, modulation wheel, where you can turn it up or down. And here's what modulation does. I'm gonna put it on the bass. If this is what your bass normally sounds like, if you turn it up, and then there's everything in between, right? So it's just this way to kind of vamp up or kind of grind up uh, uh, whatever synth line, you might hear it in a bass line or in a synth or to even have it kind of rotating uh, as your song progresses. All right, let's move down here to another one of my favorite features of the musical typing keyboard and that is the sustain pedal. So I'm gonna click on a piano and if I'm hitting a piano normally, it the notes stop, right? But if I hold down the sustain pedal, so cool it's like you can you can build out piano lines and use the sustain pedal just like you would with a normal MIDI controller or keyboard and it's just it's amazing that you have that on your typing keyboard I love it then of course here is your keys this is just telling you where you're at what note you're on represented on a keyboard and then down here at the bottom we've already said about the octave but the other thing is the velocity so you can tell it how hard or how soft you want it to hit so it's not about loud quiet, it's more about hard punch versus soft tap. Like acoustic drum set, you can hear kind of this, excuse me, the soft feel versus if you get up top, it's gonna like crack the snare. It's not just volume, it's how hard they're, they're hitting it. So that's that, I honestly don't adjust that much here, I adjust it in the edit window. So that's all of the features within the musical typing keyboard and I have to tell you, it's exactly the same as what's on my MIDI controller. I have, well I had to buy a sustain pedal, I have pitch bin, mod wheel, I can move up and down octaves and the velocity is just controlled by how hard I hit my MIDI controller. But let's do this, I want to play this intro piece right here and show you on the typing keyboard what's being played and show you how you can make fully blown arrangements literally just using your typing keyboard. It's so sinking cool. So I'm gonna start with the drums, okay? 
All right, so I'm going to start with the drums. So that's what's being played on the drums, right? And then we could add in the bass. So here. And then we could bring in this FM piano, this kind of electric piano. You can see what I'm playing there. Click the button, bro. Right? And then we could bring in these air bells. Obviously, we could bring in the last one. So it's so cool. And the point I want to make with this is simply this. No matter if you use your typing keyboard, which is free to you because you already have it, or you use a $100 MIDI controller, $1,000 MIDI controller, it's not going to sound any different inside of GarageBand or inside of your... DAW. So don't feel like you're out of luck or you're at a disadvantage if you're using this to program and to process and to produce stuff. Like I have literally produced stuff for clients on this just because it was quicker and faster and I was on a laptop. I hope that's helpful guys. This was like one of the biggest discoveries for me when I was first getting into GarageBand and starting to produce and record and write music. Leave a comment below and I'll catch you in the next video friends. Peace out. You said it